Hello everybody, Jackson here, and today I want to share a little fucking nifty trail I went on in my mind tonight. I, I had a commenter on one of my Battleborn videos, he was saying that he would never buy Battleborn because of how Gearbox has treated him with two franchises. I, I'm pretty sure he's talking about Dude Nukem and obviously Colonial Spaceman. Now... This was an interesting trail because I started to think of the parallels between Randy Pitchford and Sean Murray in the case of those, you know, that game. And kind of just this smile lying bullshit, you know, kind of. And how it's it's never it's never been removed from his reputation. Like Randy Pitchford and this this guy he said, he said they fucked those fucking and I can't argue with him. He's absolutely 100% correct. Like what they did with Colonial Space Marines was wrong as fuck. You know, and I didn't really hear about that. I wasn't into that hype of that game. Not to say I don't love aliens. I remember I fucking I remember the first time I saw those movies. I was so little and I fucking I, I think the first thing that I ever saw of aliens was Alien 3 and it was that shower scene trailer. And then probably within a few months I saw aliens at my buddy's house. But like I was young. But I remember that seeing that alien like go up to you know Ripley when she's in the that famous scene she's in the medical ward and like it comes right up against her face you know and the shit's dripping off of it so not to say I don't love aliens I just wasn't I was like I had some fucking bullshit going on in my life so I wasn't paying attention really to video games and so I wasn't on the hype train for that I missed that completely but having gone back and looked at all of it, and I had a couple of friends who were affected by it, who were huge Alien fans, and that's kind of something you just don't fuck with when it comes to, I mean, fandom in general. Stuff like that that's rooted in years and years and childhoods. You don't fucking take something like that and disrespect it. And if you do, then you need, in the, the very least, you need to apologize, right? Like, at least apologize. And he has never done that. So, what was interesting is I was thinking, why would he not apologize? This would help Battleborn, this would help Gearbox overall. Like, why not just come out and say, hey, look, this is what we did, and admit to it. Uh, part of me thinks maybe lawsuits. Maybe lawsuits are involved. Maybe he's worried that lawsuits would happen. Uh, I have no idea. But I think that this is kind of the overall problem with the industry is it's either there's just apologize and move on but you can't apologize now because you know situation and so this immediately obviously as i was thinking about all this thinking about how this guy personally he didn't fucking buy battleborn didn't even care because of the way that gearbox is treated you know things that he loves and he has been hosed by them and in his opinion they they are no longer worthy of his dollar and that is a completely valid and, you know, appropriate reaction for the way that they have handled and, you know, treated him. And I started to draw parallels from between that, all of that, Randy Pitchford never fucking coming out, never fucking apologizing, never having an excuse for any of it. Just a bunch of bullshit, bullshit, you know, cheesy lines and bullshit. So I started to think then of fucking Sean Murray, obviously, and No Man's Sky. I, and I just, I, was, I began to wonder, can they afford not to apologize? Because I'm thinking of No Man's Sky, and I'm looking at it, and it's, it was on a grander scale. I mean, this son of a bitch went on Stephen Colbert, right? So, you've got this whole different situation in the case of Alien Space Marines. Because that did happen. But it wasn't in the spotlight. Like I said, I wasn't paying attention at that time. A lot of people just weren't paying attention at that time. First time I fucking picked up the Gearbox game, it was Borderlands 2. And I have a lot of awesome memories with that game. It's a fun fucking game to play. I liked, I enjoyed the pre-sequel, not as much, but it was still good. So the thing is, is for me, I had a different experience. But the spotlight on Hello Games is what? Joe Danger? which is almost a non-existent game. I've never played it. I've watched, you know, I, I subscribe this guy in office, dude. He's pretty crazy. He does some like trick challenges and things like that. He's a speed runner. I originally found his channel through uh, watching Axiom Verge streams of people running the speed runs so that I could get my speed run in order so I could get the trophy. And because of his 
like speed run i wasn't able to nail it down completely i think he got it in i think his record was 38 minutes but that was before uh tom hat fixed several things but i i remember watching it and because of that i was able to get it like an hour and a half speed run which is fucking pretty incredible for that game and he's you know so i was following you know i've seen him do like he does the score breakers and things on action hank a bunch of other games on ps4 just to go for the leaderboards he's he's a very cool gamer i like watching him he's like he's very intense and i, I remember watching his stream and i was asking him questions and i mean he was attempting hard mode speedrun at the time which was really like he he it was it was pretty intense because it was very shortly after release so even with that he was responding to my you know comments he was taking the time you know he was like yeah yeah this 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 he's like that's how you do it because i had found his guides on certain things and i was like asking him how he was able to get that to work and i was able to figure out some exploits you know and get just some maneuverability exploits i think the one i was only able to use was the you shoot the pod and then teleport to it the drone and teleport the shoot and teleport and that's how you can avoid getting a bunch of upgrades like the claw and things there's also the he was able to skip getting the glitch bomb but that's sorry you guys probably don't even understand what i'm saying right now i'm, I'm just trailing out anyway i was i was so it's a non-existent game joe danger <laughs> sorry wow wild tangent so it's not a very you know known property so they don't really have a whole lot on their you know like to carry their name their goodwill as opposed to you know like gearbox having borderlands having a guy like me who you know i buy battleborn you know what i mean because they didn't fuck me over in that instance i was personally unaffected you know i've never played that game never fucking will touch that game because i was war you know i i was fortunate enough to be told and never have to touch it right and so but they have no man's sky and then i started to think about this like this is where my mind started to go i was like so what they're doing right now is they're slowly like trying to pull up above the lie and i find it this is the problem i have with these youtubers and people like that that are going on about just praising them journalists whatever praising them for this update and how you know it just oh it's so wonderful i want to i want to talk to you about something is it okay for this company to make this game a fucking 10 out of 10 without facing any consequences for what they did i mean sure they've had the refund you know rave they had the fucking down clicks and just horrible reviews on steam and everywhere from me everyone you know because we're honest it's not a great fucking game dude it's really not and the main part of why it's not great is because it's not at all anything what they were saying what they sold us okay so he's in this situation now where i feel like what he's trying to do what hello games is trying to do is set the game on a course where the voices will get louder and louder with the praise and slowly people will forget the fucking release and they'll have a you know and it'll be a really strong game after he's had time to add all the things that he lied about during the course of development and i started to think about that i was like so that's what he's trying to do will it work will it win over all of us that in the beginning of this understand that he did something morally wrong he fucking lied to us on a grand scale sean murray fucking lied to us every single person who fucking heard anything about that game was lied to he lied on the colbert report and now or colbert i don't know what it is now what he's hosting but I saw the clip, he, he went on there, and he, he that was like way early. I remember seeing that on YouTube because it was trending before the release of No Man's Sky. And I was looking at that and I was like, wow, man. You know, I was right to defend them in their $60 asking price. You know, I was right to call out the people who were saying this is dumb and bullshit. And I was just a tool. I was just a tool for this man. You know, like, is this going to win over me Who's who feels like... A fucking fool 
having defended this man and this company and their decision to charge $60 for, at best, a half-functioning alpha. I'd say it was less than half-functioning on release, considering the amount of hard crashes that would occur. From what I understand, there's still many hard crashes occurring. Right, I'm running into bugs left and right in the 30 minutes that I fucking play the thing. Just to check out the update. So is it is it going is he going to follow his course and get out of this and just kind of sort of never have to lie and still have a future in the gaming industry, much like Gearbox, much like Randy Pitchford, that they still were able to carry over some goodwill after this lie, after these lies, after these fucking just blatant shitting on, you know, properties that are, you just shouldn't shit on this. It's like the Ghostbusters thing, man. That was such a bad fucking idea. I knew it was bad the fucking second they said it was a Ghostbusters remake. I was just like, no, dude, no. Why? And it's, it, you know, at that, like, you're setting yourself up to fail when you fucking do that. But that is just, I don't know. They, they were able to carry over. I bought the game. These are the thoughts I have, ladies and gentlemen, when I read comments. But yeah, this guy was pissed. He's like, nah, man, like, I understand. He's like, it's cool if you buy it. He was really respectful, really cool dude. Just was like, it's cool if you buy it, dude. Like, buy it from Gearbox, I understand. But you gotta understand where I'm coming from. I will never buy a property from them again. Like, they shit on me too much, dude. And I, it just, I can't disagree with him. I can't fight against him. He's, you know, that's an honest point of view. That's a, you know, a honest perspective to have based on his situation and what he's, you know, experienced from Randy Pitchford, from fucking Gearbox. And it's just, God. I, these, are, these are the thoughts I have, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video. It was a random tangent my mind went on after reading this gentleman's comment and It took me through that and I just I was like this is interesting enough to share like this is interesting enough to share This is this is a discussion video. This will start a discussion in the comments So let me know what below what you think like is he gonna get out of this? Is he gonna slippery slip up, you know into still having a reputation still having a future here? Or is it, is it just going to be too much for too many people because of the spotlight on No Man's Sky? Because of the massive hype? Because it was just so much more exposed than the fucking Randy Pitchford thing in the Gearbox situation with aliens, Colonial Space Marines, and Duke Nukes? You know what I mean? Like, what, what is it? Anyway, let me know below, guys. I fucking love you. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Stay safe. And always remember... It's all okay, man. <laughs> it's all okay.